Hey guys, me OG Duffy. After yesterday's amazing find in uh, Lewis, I'll never find one like that again, but I will not stop looking. I'll be showing you that real soon. I find myself in Brighton today. So I'm gonna go to, uh, there's a retro game shop here, which is fairly new. I'm gonna pop to that. And then uh, I think uh, a few beers, a bit more game hunting, rock and roll. Kicking off now in the North Lanes, I had like some boot fairy traders out. Had a look, nothing really there. There was an old beaten up PS1, but mate, it was ropey as trust me. And then of course, cash converters or crack converters as I so commonly refer to it as. Uh, had some good little games in here actually, to be fair, a nice little range. Uh, wasn't a huge amount, but uh, a good good little range as I say. PS3, had a great deal on the PS3. It was like £1.99 a game, I think, for certain titles. And uh, it was like buy one get one free for the same price sort of thing. So you'd get two games for, for two quid sort of thing, which weren't bad, which weren't bad at all. A few Nintendo Switch there, and of course we're coming along to the PlayStation 2 section. Rugrats there, Beach of Bandits. I do remember my little OG watching Rugrats back in the day, and some PS1 games there. Look, and along with these was Sonic R and the Sega Saturn. Good to see a Sega Saturn game out in the wild, you know. I've never played this. It resembles some sort of... Is it a bit like Mario Kart, but obviously without the vehicles and the characters from Sonic? Never played it, guys. So uh, is my assumption correct there? It looks very much like it is a sort of a, a Mario Kart type rip-off. Uh, looks good fun, actually. Uh, if you remember this, if you played it and it is any good, do let me know in the comments, please. And then there was this on the PS1, Fighting Force. Um, another game that passed me by back in the day, um, looking at it, it looks like it's a bit of a, a multiplayer type beat em up, but uh, in a similar sort of vein as Streets of Rage and Double Dragon etc, but in 3D. So that looks really interesting, uh, another one, if you've played it, let me know in the comments, is it any good, should I pick them up? Bit of a spoiler there, I didn't get them guys, but uh, should I have done? Then on to a charity shop where I was hoping to replicate my luck from the previous day where I got that amazing pickup. There's the fun now if you've missed it. Um, PS2 games, a few PS3 and Xbox 360. I'm seeing a lot of that Kinect game lately. All fairly decently priced, all fairly priced in here, but to be honest, nothing that re I really wanted or didn't already have, so I passed that one. And then we come to this section here, this is the indoor market where we find the retro gaming shop which is known as Magic Whistle Gaming. A uh, nice little window display to tease you in. Now it's at this stage, I enter the store, I do some video and I've, all the footage I took in the shop did not come out. So. I thought, well, I can't not put the video out because it was a good store and I want to tell you guys about it. So I contacted this great individual tuber here, Joe Gaming Girly. She visited recently and she uploaded some videos. So I've asked her very kindly, could I use some of her footage from her visit? And she said, yes. So thank you very much, Joe Gaming Girly. She's another YouTuber. So if you don't already do so, go over and have a look, see if her channel's for you. And if so, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I know she will thoroughly appreciate it as much as I appreciated her allowing me to use her footage. Cheers, Joe. Much appreciated. Magic Whistle Gaming in Brighton in the indoor market here um, has something for everyone. There literally is something for everyone here. Now, what I really liked about the shop personally, myself, was the layout of it. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't what I mean by everything was laid out clean and tidy and stuff. It was a bit, there was something here and there was something there. and You were like rummaging to find things in a good way. It felt like you were actually game hunting without everything being organised too much for you, you know, which I thought was a really, really nice touch. Now look at this here. Gremlins 2, the new batch, right, on Game Boy. They had two copies of this. Uh, it's £25 a copy. I loved Gremlins 1. I just thought it was an absolutely amazing film. Gremlins 2 wasn't as good, but I still thoroughly enjoyed it. The Gremlins, there's something very sexy about Gremlins, isn't it? <laughs> or is it just me, guys? But yes, it is a Christmas movie well the first one is anyway moving on other Game Boy games here as well so nice real mix of Game Boy Advance and stuff bit of GameCube 
And like I say, it's these little like tubs that you see lying around the shop that are brilliant because you just delve in and you want to see, you don't know what's lying on each shelf and stuff and um, it's really, really good because it feels like you're genuinely game hunting, like I've already said. Uh, now they are building a, um, a range for the Japanese stuff. Bit of a game there by Squaresoft. I couldn't tell you what that says. Oh, my Japanese is not that great. But look at this here. House of the Dead 2. Now, if you've got a Nintendo Wii or a Wii U, honestly, you've got to buy that game there. The House of the Dead 2 and 3. It's uh, it's just brilliant. Because the good thing with the Wii, and especially the Wii U, because it upscales the graphics, you get to relive these great railgun shooters from the arcades using the uh, the zapper gun on on the Wii and it, they are so so playable still and it really gives you that good adrenaline buzz from the arcade and everything so a little bit of advice there guys uh, do use a Nintendo Wii and get some of them zapper games they are absolutely brilliant especially this one as stated they are building a uh, Japanese section up of games here and had some Super Famicom games as well as long as these uh, the Sega Saturn and PlayStation games as well which are all Japanese imports I do like the Japanese import games I think some of them look particularly great especially alternative covers and stuff and that's the Super Famicom section I was talking about here I might have picked one of these up you'll have to wait till the end guys but I'll show you all my pickups from this weekend and uh, couple of xbox crystals here i do own an xbox crystal myself it's in my cupboard i really should get it out um and but like i say just a real treasure trove of bits here and all just lying about really so you're just getting amongst it and having a good old scavenge really like there you know a little pile of ps1 games it's just it was good i really really liked it it was uh it was different you know because they're all sort of always well organized and stuff and uh and but this like i say there was something everywhere and it's good you had to you had to have a good good old mooch about um they had the usual rows of your ps1 and ps2 and uh, your ps3 games and that sort of stuff i did look down in ps1 titles but unfortunately they didn't have warcraft 2 that's a title that still evades me i'm still looking for it and i will find a copy of it when i pikachu oh yes he says now what would a retro game shop be without Mega Drive games? Um, and there was this Road Rash 2. Now Joe's picking that one out there. 18 pounds. But why is it extra wide? I've not seen it in an extra wide case like that. If you know, drop it in the comments. Biohazard 2. No manual unfortunately, but a Capcom game. Now this, I really like this section. There was a like, load of 8-bit games for me back in the day. Uh, your Sinclair, your Commodore 64, etc., along with some really, really nice old uh, Atari 2600 VCS cartridges. So if you ever do find yourself down there in Brighton, do make sure you stop in at Magic Whistle Gaming. There really is something for everyone here, no matter what you collect, and uh, there's some nice, nice bits, actually. I mean, as you can see, there's that Spider-Man just hanging in the background there on the Atari VCS. Where, uh, Joe picks it up in a minute, so we get a closer look at that one. Demolition Derby, black and white cartridge that one. Now this, this was still in when I was there, the Return of the Jedi. Now if that was boxed and complete, I'd have, oh, I'd have had a copy of that, of course I would, because I'm still looking out for them Star Wars games on the, uh, the VCS. Obviously, this is a great Capcom game. You know the OG Duffy, I do like a Capcom game. So thanks for stopping in on this one, Joe. Um, they're just great, aren't they, Capcom titles? Now, Ghouls and Ghosts. This was a tough, tough game, but you know what? The conversion of this on the Commodore 64 was not half bad, especially the soundtrack. Sure, it had its problems, as all them 8-bit games did back in the day, especially them conversions, as we always evidence in them versus videos, but the soundtrack on this was, was brilliant on the C64, so another classic by the SID chip. And getting back to the 8-bit games that we have a good rummage through, Good old Joe, bless her luck. She put out the one side. I can't remember if she picked that one up or not. I know she does uh, one of the VCS games that's stacked behind me. Now this, this here, look at this. They sold a million. Staff of Karnath. 
Daily Thompson's Decathlon Jet Set Willy Beachhead. What a great four game compilation this would have been back in the day to have this in the collection. I mean, Star for Carnaf was ultimate play the game. They made some absolutely superb games. Uh, Daily Thompson's Decathlon, basically a bit of a rip off, really, wasn't it? Of, uh, you know, the Konami arcade game that we all know, track and field. Beachhead, great little games, actually. I remember Beachhead 2 more than Beachhead 1, and of course, Jet Set Willy, which was a classic on the spectrum. But what surprised me is when you had certain games appear on the uh, the Commodore 64, like the Spectrum Classic, which is Jet Set Willy, how well the Commodore 64 could handle Spectrum-type graphics. Why didn't they do this more often? I really don't know. But what a great compilation that would have been back in the day. That concluded the footage from Magic Whistle Gaming in Brighton. Again, a massive thanks to Joe um, for allowing me to use this bit of footage from in store. I really don't know what happened to my camera. I had a mad moment, mate. Everything else worked fine throughout the day, you know. And especially that, that pickup I'd had the day before, you know, that awesome pickup. And again, a massive shout out to uh, Magic Whistle Gaming. Really nice people in there. Uh, good, friendly staff, which is what you want in a little retro game shop like this. Don't get me wrong, it's not the biggest shop out there, but it's got plenty of good little stock pieces and something for everyone, as I keep saying, a real range, you know. And it's good to have a dip through the shelves and see what you can come up with and the rest of it. They're on Facebook, they post out and everything else, so do give them a phone call. If there's something in particular you're looking for, because they're very helpful people, very nice and... Uh, do support these local businesses. Anyway, time for a pint. So a well-earned pint following the game hunt. Nice pint of San Miguel. Liked it so much, I had a second in this first pub. Then crept off down the north lanes. Lovely little pub, this one. Beaver Town Neck Oil. Highly recommended. And again, I stopped and had another pint of this in here because it was very, very tasty, guys. Do have Beaver Town Neck Oil if you can. And then the last pub in Brighton was this. It was a vegan pub near the station. And I had a pint of Heineken. It was very nice. Train back to Lewis. A quick pint of Brew Dog before going for a lovely Turkish meal with the missus. A great weekend. So that was Brighton, guys. Magic Whistle Gaming. I also popped into cash converters and a couple of charity shops. Unfortunately, the charity shops were not as giving or fortunate to me as they uh, the day before in Lewis. There's the fun now. If you've not seen it, go and check it out after this, of course. Uh, and of course, it was an amazing game. £2.50 for a £100 game. A once-in-a-lifetime find, my friends. But... We get them every now and then. And it instills the faith back in us. But back to Brighton. As you can see, I had a good few beers. It was a lovely day. It was, it was good. It was good. It was good. Uh, Magic Whistle Gaming. Good little shop. And as I said, I liked it because it was laid out differently and stuff. And you sort of had to rummage for stuff and all that. It was just a shame the footage failed me on my phone. I really don't know what happened on the, on the camera and that. I really don't know what went wrong. But hey, it is what it is. But... Joe Gaming Girl come through for the OG, so thank you, Joe. Again, appreciated that use of the footage, of course. So let's go, let's get to my pickups, let's see what I found. So to the pickups, guys, cash converters was first. Uh, I do love popping in cash converters, because again, you just never know what you're gonna find, you know? Um, had a nice little range in there. Uh, picked a few little bits up and had a deal going on. So I picked up two games. If a game was £1.99, you could get another one for one ninety nine with it. So they're a pound each, basically. So instead of reducing the prices to a quid, it was buy one, get one free, it's one pound ninety nine. Hey, I don't know, I'm not complaining. Anyway, I saw this. DC Universe Online. Now, I'm guessing the servers for this are probably closed down. Um, but you know what? It's OG Duffy, mate. I love DC. I mean, I'm a big fan of my comic books, as you know. Um, so I thought for this, to go in the collection, it's great. You know, and they've got a Joker and all that in there. Uh, I do, a 30 day subscription uh, is included with the purchase of this. But like I say, I doubt the servers are still up and running, you know. But it's got an instruction manual and all that. So, you know, I thought I've, I've, I might even put it on my app. Go and see if the see if they're still in, but that was £1.99, that £1.99, so when I went to pay it, we can go and get another one for £1.99, so I picked this up, Rocksmith, 
okay. Uh, this again was £1.99, but actually it was two for £1.99. So a pound each, just a pound each. Stop any quibbles. Uh, now this, you put a lead from your uh, guitar, or bass guitar, straight into the PS3. And you're able to play it a bit like Guitar Hero, but um, it teaches you sort of the guitar and stuff as well. Uh, and you can get different sound effects on it and stuff. I do have a guitar, so I do have the cable as well for Rocksmith somewhere. It's up in the office, I must dig it out. Uh, and I'm going to probably give this a little go sometime, you know what I mean? Bit of In Bloom by Nirvana. Could be fun. Guitar Hero for real, guys. Guitar Hero for real. And the next game I got in cash converters was Yakuza 4 for the PS3. I keep banging on about my PS3, guys, and my collection's getting there. It's looking nice, and I still play quite a bit of PS3. I'm making way for them. I've never played a Yakuza game, so I imagine it's a bit like Mafia and stuff, but um, obviously on a, on a Japanese level. Um, this was £9.99 in cash converters. If I'd have got this in a, a CEX, it would have cost me £10, so I saved a penny. Yes, one whole pence. Hmm, enough said really. <laughs> Manual and all that with it. Uh, now, am I right in saying with this, you could go in video arcades, amusement arcades, I'm ready somewhere, I'm sure, you could play classic uh, Sega arcade games from back in the day. Let me know if that's true in the comments. Anyway, £9.99, Yakuza 4. Look forward to giving that one a visit. Uh, next three titles I got from uh, Magic Whistle Gaming. The first one I got from Magic Whistle was this Eternal Ring on the PS2. Don't know anything about this at all, but hey, it's fantasy. I enjoy my fantasy titles, so, uh, you know, and I like that little strap line there. Who said fantasies had to be final? It was Swipe at Squaresoft there from Ubisoft. Um, <clears throat> manual disc, etc. Not played it, not put it on yet. Um... Hey, I'm sure it'd be a bit of fun, who knows? But I, it wasn't priced up in there, so I asked. I think it was over a pound or two pounds. I can't remember, it was cheap anyway. So anyway, that's another one for the, a shelf filler for the collection. Uh, and then I've got this, a Super Famicom game. This was £12, and it is Power Manga, uh, as you can see there. Power Manga. This was released, I do remember this. Uh, it's a bit like Populous and stuff, if I recall. Uh, some nice graphics and that on there. But anyway, Power Manga, £12 I paid for that one. Uh, so, as, you, as you know, it's a, it's a Famicom game. I do like my Famicom titles, the Japanese titles, so that'll fit very nicely on the shelf. So it's another nice little addition there. As I say, um, they are trying to build up their Japanese retro section. So uh, if Japanese games is your collecting thing, then get down there. There's quite a few bits to be had. And the last pickup I had from there was a PS1 title. And it is Warhammer Dark Omen. Warhammer Dark Omen. Now, to be honest, it's Games Workshop. Games Workshop. I do like Games Workshop. I enjoy like the, the fantasy element of all that sort of stuff. And I used to paint the figures of that many moons ago. Haven't done so for quite some time. Obviously complete with manual. And the disc and that in there. But it's a new one on me, so I'm not sure if this is like um, sort of a, a management, war game management again, or if it's an FPS or what. I really don't know. The Warhammer World new campaign. Deployment, others, line of sight, positioning of regiments. So I'm guessing uh, Warhammer Dark Omen is a bit like the, the fantasy game itself. A bit like the, the, the game they have with the figures and stuff. Where you have like fantasy armies fighting each other and what have you. So to be honest, I'll probably give that a go on the old PS3 there. Because that's the backward compatible one to PS2 and PS1 games it plays. So I'm looking forward to giving that £12 a go, that one. I'm also on keeping an eye out for Death Trap Dungeon on the PS1. Uh, I have seen it in two shops I've been in now. And both times I've spotted it when I've been filming, I thought, oh, I'll go back and get that. And I've forgotten both times. So, mate, I don't know. So anyway, all in all, Brighton. Great day out, lots of pubs, lots of little shops to go to and all that, and nice eateries and the rest of it. And of course, Magic Whistle Gaming, great little shop. And of course, Joe Gaming Girl, thank you very much. Respect to all of you guys. Anyway, as I say, if you want to get down there, do so. Have a look. There's plenty to get there. And I've been OG Duffy. You guys have been awesome as always. 
Do the usual comments. What pickups have you had of late? Let me know. Laters.